The Eden Valley Fire in January 2014 burnt over 24,000 hectares of farmland and resulted in millions of dollars in property losses. In the days that followed, affected landholders realised they had to destock. With the help of stock agents, rural consultants, neighbours and the farming community, they scrambled to move stock, adjusting them on neighbouring properties and in other regions, or moving stock into drought lots. Destocking provided instant results as native grasses started to shoot in three to four days after the fires. And these were kicked along with 100 millimetres of rain falling three weeks later. It's been 20 months since the Eden Valley bushfires and we're catching up with three fire affected landholders to see how their pastures are recovering and what strategies they've put in place for long term management. So we're a family partnership with my brother, myself and our wives and families and we run 6,800 hectares. Bushfires of uh, January 2014 went through and burnt 85% of the 6,800 hectares so that meant we had to move a lot of stock off. We, we farm merino sheep, merino ewes, so we adjusted a lot of those on um, stubbles uh, in the mid-north. The cattle we adjusted uh, down the southeast and on properties down there. Under our rotational grazing program we were running three DC per hectare but we have um, come back and, and back to about two and a half DC per hectare. Uh, I have an 800 hectare property and 440 hectares roughly of that what I worked out um, got completely burnt in that fire including a lot of fences etc. My sheep Oh, I actually put into a drought lot, which I had here, uh, and I did actually send one lot away on adjustment. Sheep went out into the paddocks end of April, uh, just prior to lambing in May. Pre-fire, uh, I was running 2.5 DSE to the hectare. After the fire, I actually lifted my stocking rate to three. Uh, that was due to some of the management decisions I'd made pre-fire with fencing for rotational grazing. Uh, I also sowed feed after the fire. Drought lot, I could do that as well because growing my own hay and grain, which I keep everything, the benefits were that obviously I could lift my stocking rate uh, and then it also gave the native grasses a chance to have that recovery time. Even though we had brilliant rain directly after the fire, the two springs that have followed have been especially dry, delaying the recovery of the pastures. This project has helped farmers manage their native grasses, firstly by running workshops in order to identify their grasses, secondly by encouraging farmers to monitor their native pastures and look at the recovery of the grasses, and also to look at the bare ground and how their pastures are recovering. The Barossa Improved Grazing Group have been working with farmers to establish monitoring sites to understand what species are coming back and in what abundance. Monitoring transects have been placed in three properties affected by the Eden Valley fire. The monitoring takes place every two months and involves placing a steel mesh quadrant divided into 100 squares every 50 metres along a transect line. So at this point here we've got wallaby grass, so we'd mark that down as wallaby grass. The species are identified and their cover is recorded in 100 points made by the mesh. We also include the dead matter, which goes in as litter because it's all included as organic matter. The fire came through this spot. Uh, on my right hand side, this side was unburnt and on this side it got burnt. And so that's why we set up the monitoring site here so we could look at the two and compare them and see how they're going. So uh, I've been looking at the results from the trials and also comparing that uh, visually as well. And uh, that's helping me to make some decisions on how long I should be having sheeps in paddock for and, and when they should be moving and probably when they should be coming back. We try and keep a thousand kilos per hectare dry matter. I guess the assessment from our perspective is actually just riding around on the motorbike as we're checking stock and uh, you just really eyeball it but it will be really good to have this monitoring program to uh, sort of validate that our eyeballing is, is accurate. So We're going to make 15% less use than uh, we have been averaging over the last uh, 10 or 15 years. We think uh, reducing our stocking rate will not have a, a negative impact on our income and it will also ensure that our pastures are actually maintained in a better condition. The Eden Valley fire burnt Michael Evans's property out towards Eden Valley. 
Like many landholders, Michael was eligible for funding and he used it to fence to land class, fence off watercourses and also for revegetation. And then on the Friday the massive fire got away uh, or started and uh, we lost 1400 hectares out here and uh, about 130 sheep and, and fencing and pumps and a few other things. So and lots of trees. Since the fire we've uh, planted 800 trees here, uh, fenced off the creek uh, in, in a couple spots. Have you planted more than just trees here? Have you planted yeah, a variety so, of species? So trees and shrubs and um, things for the small birds, yeah, yeah, that's right. And plants that are native to the local they're, they're meant to be native to the, yeah, yeah. so hopefully um, acacias and uh, she oaks and, and the like, and gum trees, as well as gum trees, but, yeah. and as well as peppermint box, which are endangered. We, we normally run about a thousand sheep out here, um, so 500 ewes and, and their lambs. Um, this year we're down to probably about 300 ewes, just because of the, uh, the lack of biomass, ground cover. It's the bulk of feed that we, we just haven't got this year. The results of the monitoring program has shown the recovery of the native pastures at Cainton, Macolta and Eden Valley, and it's clear that two dry springs have slowed the recovery of the pastures. What was thought initially to be a two-year recovery is more likely to be three years. Despite this, we have learnt that native grasses do recover well when they are looked after and respond better than annual grasses. Monitoring native grasses allows fire-affected landholders to make informed choices, whether it be destocking, putting their stock into containment lots or adjustment to allow their pastures to recover. Thanks Joe, Michael and Greg for sharing their stories with us and to all the other landholders involved in the project. If you would like to find out more about the Barossa Improved Grazing Group, please visit our website.